Six Peculiar Things About Chiyo Nakahara, According to Dazai, by Blowing Your Mind, Chapter 5. Another perplexing thing about Chiyo Nakahara was that he was observant. Despite his behavior, he analyzed and learned. He also was the one who knew Dazai the best. There were few who actually took the time to get to know Dazai past his multiple personalities, and Chiyo had been one of them. Dazai didn't know if it was purposeful or they had ended up spending so much time together as partners that they were forced to read each other. Either way, it was an unnerving thing for someone to truly know Dazai. Though there were also instances where it came in handy. Chuya angrily eyed the shackles around his wrist and Dazai knew that he could break them at any second if they had been normal shackles. But new weapons that cancelled out abilities were arising, and it seemed that this organization had access to some of them. It had not been part of the plan. In fact, the very plan had been for the two of them to go undercover, one as a prisoner and the other as the guard. Of course, Dazai insisted that he got the role of the guard because prison clothes did not look good on him, and Chia's mannerisms fit them perfectly. Chia had not been gratified when Mori agreed with him. It had been a week now, with Dazai climbing the ranks of their enemy organization and Chuya feeling the constant itch of Arhabaki under his skin, though he was never able to access the power. Dazai did not know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, considering the toll Arhabaki already had on him. When the shackles were removed, there was no doubt that things would be hairy. Dazai pulled away from the wooden desk he had been leaning over alone in a small room with only one singular light bulb above him. It reminded him of the fear factor that added to the torture rooms, though he was currently not being tortured. His cover was very much intact. The note he left on the desk was carefully folded into an envelope, though Dazai did not lick the seal, simply leaving it open in case there had been some toxin on the paper. After all, nothing here was his. Dazai duly wondered if Chia was having a good time. The few times he had walked past a cell, he was in a corner, glaring at a wall. Dazai would assume he got the information, because they were leaving this place tonight. The letter he had left on the desk was his resignation one. It was a polite thing to do, after all. They would find it by the time he and Chia were gone. Though, first, he would need to worry about their escape plan. Originally, it was to be to use Chiyo's ability, though obviously that was not an option currently. Dazai would need to be the one to formulate a plan, since Chiyo couldn't snap out of his handcuffs. It was a good thing that Dazai had multiple backup plans in his mind, though Chiyo would need to go along with him, even if he didn't know the plan. Following blindly was never his forte, though, fortunately, he seemed to know Dazai's plans even when he never told him. Dazai eyed his cramped hole of a room before flicking the lights off and smoothly exiting. That would hopefully be the last time he would ever have to look in and inhale the stale air. The corridor around him echoed with silent footsteps as the other workers at his level all traveled to the auditorium, the meeting place where orders were given out. This organization was large and scarily organized, though it did not compare to the Port Mafia. As soon as they got out of here and relayed their information to the boss, the organization would no longer be a threat. Dazai was one of the last to take a seat in the rickety velvet chair near the front before the lights were lowered, and, just as a show, the large curtains opened with a grating screech. There must have been someone in the lighting booth, because the lights shed on the rotten wood floor of the stage were bright and cutting. It was the first time Dazai had been to a meeting like this one. He assumed that it was normal for a cloaked figure to be standing at the center. This place was starting to feel more like a cult than anything. Silence echoed through the large room as the booming voice cut through it, distorting and three octaves lower than normal human capacity. Our meeting today. Does I zoned out on the rest, as he did with the normal Port Mafia meetings. He already knew the vital information to take down the organization, and there was no reason to listen any further until a familiar rattle of chains could be heard, dragging on the wooden floor from backstage, until a familiar redhead shone under the lights. Chuya. Dazai blinked back in to focus to see two guards that he had seen on duty, walking on stage, Chuya between them. Well, this certainly was not good. 
After the meeting, while everyone was busy and in disorder, he had planned to get Chuya out and cause a riot with the other prisoners by releasing them, though Chuya would be on stage now. Dazai had only seen flashes of him in the cell, but now he appeared to be pissed. His arms were strained against the shackles that concealed his ability as his feet dragged against the floor. He looked like an angered cat. Dazai supposed he didn't blame him, especially when he was roughly shoved forward, tripped by the chains around his ankles, causing him to land on his chin harshly. This. The leader placed their foot on the small of Chuya's back, holding him down against the wood. Is the former king of the sheep. Former. Seeing as his organization was demolished, and now he has no information of use to us. There is no reason to keep him in the chambers, now is there? A low rumble of agreement from the crowd. Dazai's lips drew into a thin line. This was certainly a change of plans, though that also meant that they did not know the Port Mafia was among their ranks. That would have been the worst-case scenario. Now he is considered merchandise. A foot dug into Trio's back more, and Dazai could see him grinding his teeth to hide the wince from his place across the room. Meaning we will sell him. The lowest bid starts at... Ah, so they were selling him. And as I observed as the price continued to shoot up, as hands raised all around him, it was a silent ordeal. The only one talking had been the leader. Thus I supposed it must have been out of turn to do so. And just when a surprisingly high price was announced, does I spotted no twitch of a shoulder or slightly raising of the hand. He raised his own, high. Heads did not turn to him, but he could feel their eyes on him. Chia looked enraged, and Dazai smirked at him. Chia opened his mouth to yell at him, but the sudden look of seriousness that crossed Dazai's face must have shut him up. Dazai was the highest bidder. He did not have any money on him currently. The room was dead silent as Dazai stood from the creaky chair. He knew how this situation would play out. He needed to cause an unrest for his plan to work, because now, logically, he saw there was no way to escape without bringing down yet another organization. Of course, Dazai could have let Chuya get sold to someone, but then the plan would be foiled. Dazai spoke. I would like to observe him before buying him. That was when heads turned to Dazai in surprise. Dazai kept a blank face as he stared up at the person on stage, though they did not move an inch mask glaring underneath the lights. Then they moved their foot off Chia. So be it. The false voice rang out, and as I smirked, perfect. Phase two revolved solely around whether Chia would cooperate or not. As I avoided the cracks in the steps as he climbed up the stairs. The wood of the stage was hollow under his feet, tapping loudly as he made his way over to Chia, who had now gotten up on his knees. He shot Dazai a hateful look, and Dazai got the feeling he wasn't faking it. The cloaked figure took a step back as Dazai crouched down directly in front of Chuya, amusement never leaving his face as he winked, then grabbed Chuya by the neck and roughly pushed him back against the stage. The back of his head hit the wood, and he let out a loud grunt in surprise, though once he quickly opened his eyes, he was once again glaring at Dazai. Dazai made a thoughtful noise as he stood up pretending to easily pace around Chia and study him before delivering a swift kick to his stomach. Chia curled in on himself, mouth flying open. Good, he seemed to get the plan. Daza kicked him again and again, then once more until he was sure Chia had managed to slip the knife from his boot. I'd say he's okay, though not for this high of a price. Daza sighed. Oh well. Then he nudged Chia's bald, bloodied body off the stage, out of the audience's view. Before the cloaked figure could protest, Dazai turned to them. I know why you hide under a cloak instead of showing your face. The figure froze. It's because you're weak and pathetic. Dazai's voice rang out like a chime through the dead, silent auditorium. After all, females can rule just as well as males, so why hide it? Lies. The deep voice automatically protested, though before she could reach out to Dazai in an almost comical way, sandbags fell from the ceiling, hitting the woman and breaking the floor below her. 
A hail of splinters rained down on them as the stage collapsed. What a comical way to die. As I stared at the hole the sandbags left. I didn't think that would work. Then why make the plan? Chuya growled from off stage, Dazai's knife in hand. He had cuffed the ropes to the sandbags, just as Dazai predicted he would. It was a last-case scenario. Dazai shrugged. And now I can claim we have killed someone with a sandbag. Chuya rolled his eyes as he took short steps to Dazai, attempting to not trip over the chains. Get these damn shackles off. They're starting to leave marks. As I sighed and took one look at Chuya's outstretched arms. Your wish is my command. Fucking finally. Chuya's eyes roamed over the sea of audience members, unmoving with the exact same expressions on their faces. And what about them? They will not move an inch. As I watched as the shackles fell to the floor, then moved to the ones around Chuya's ankles. They are not human, after all. Then there were the times that Chia's knowledge of Dazai made him want to hide because truly being seen by someone was not a thing he was accustomed to. Dazai had been shot. Really, it was just a graze that he had intended to look at later, preferably in the privacy of his own shipping container, but things rarely went according to plan. Chia wiped the blood from his hands with the cloth Dazai had tossed him. They both stared down at the sea of bodies before them, and Chia was the first to move. He nudged to Dazai's side, the one that ached sorely, and shoved the bloody cloth back into his open hand. Come on, I'm not staying here all damn night. He grumbled, back facing the carnage. I want to get a decent amount of sleep. Chuya is so needy. Dazai carefully pocketed the handkerchief and showed no signs of pain as he followed Chuya to the waiting car. It had been a short mission for them. A squad had been hanging around the ports for too long to not be suspicious, so as per usual the two of them were sent to execute the group. A bullet must have slipped past Chia's defense shortly after he went on the offensive, because that was the only possible way a bullet could have hit him. Daza hadn't noticed until it was all said and done. He did not notice the familiar sharp pain pulsating from his side until he saw the dark stain blooming from his white undershirt. He could make it back with no fanfare. The black coat and the darkness of the night did him many favors. Though, unfortunately, it did not make it past Chuya. When the driver stopped at Chuya's apartment complex, Dazai watched as the redhead climbed out of the back seat and stretched. Dazai leaned his head against the open window. Remember the meeting tomorrow? I know dogs have a tendency to forget. Chuya looked down at him with an expression of disdain before he reached down for the door handle, yanking on it harshly nearly making Dazai stumble out of the car and onto the concrete. Dazai straightened himself up, and before he could open his mouth to fire off another insult, warm hands were wrapping around his cold wrist and dragging him into the complex. The driver watched them with confusion, but left before Dazai could wave him back. He was completely alone with the feral dog now. What is the meaning of this? Dazai asked once they were in the elevator. Does Chia need help reaching for something? Shut your damn mouth if you know it's good for you. Chia snarled. You know why you're here. No, I d- You're injured. Chia cut him off, and when Dazai was going to deny it, the redhead jabbed a finger to his side where he knew the bullet had hit. Dazai could not hide the wince. You're whiter than normal, and don't think I'd miss the stiff way you're walking. Dazai thought he was moving just fine. I know you avoid medics like the damn plague, and you're gonna need to face them eventually. And when the elevator doors opened, Dazai saw no choice but to follow him. I have no need for medical assistance. Rethink that decision. I dislike all medical staff very much. Chuya scoffed as he unlocked the door, still pulling Dazai in. Well, it's a damn good thing I'm not a doctor. Dazai sighed and accepted his fate because really... There was no way Chia should be able to tell he was injured if no one else could. He was beginning to feel the lightheadedness come in waves, washing against him unwelcomely. Chia must have noticed the sudden sway in his steps because he kicked a chair forward without a word, glaring at Dazai to sit. The only reason he did so was for his own gain and nothing else. 
Shuya flitted around the room, grabbing bandages and medical supplies, and Dazai could see the exhaustion weighing on his bones. He wondered why Chuya was going this far, when he could be resting at the moment instead of dealing with Dazai's uncooperativeness. Don't think I'm going to do this again, Chuya grumbled as Dazai slid off his overcoat. It was as if he could read his thoughts. It's a one-time thing, because I'm making you go to the real medics next time. Does I would think about faking it once again, but Chuya had easily spotted it the first time. The hesitation in his steps and the small winces. He would not fall for Dazai's lies as everyone else did. All right, Dazai sighed, and the acceptance made Chuya's shoulders slump. All right, he agreed. Now hold this damn cloth in your mouth. It'll hurt like a bitch. It didn't when Chuya was the one digging the bullet from his shoulder. Chuya could practically smell it in the air the moment Dazai stepped into the meeting room, interrupting the boss about twenty minutes late. Usually, for affairs involving the boss, Dazai made it a point to be punctual, the exact opposite as everything else he attended. Chuya had been sitting in the chair at the large wooden table. The rest were full of members that Chuya did not care enough to learn the names of. He scrutinized Idiot Dazai as he stepped into the room without a word his lips tight as he stiffly strode to the empty seat across from Chuya's. Chuya would have thought the idiot was hiding an injury again, but upon further inspection of Dazai's expression, he quickly dismissed the theory. This was something else, maybe even much worse. The boss's eyes momentarily cut to Dazai before he continued talking once again. As usual, Chuya was the one paying attention, or at least trying, to understand the damn political talk. Dazai was always the one who understood what Mori was saying, even if he never listened. After the meetings, he usually summarized it for Chuya in the way he could understand, even if in a taunting manner. But Chuya had the feeling that Dazai was completely zoned out to the boss's words this time around. He was resting his head on a bandaged palm, and under the dim lighting, Chuya could make out that even deeper than normal eye bags, and even with the expensive suit, he looked thinner than normal. Damn it. Chia gritted his teeth. He had only been gone for a week on orders from Anisan. She had wanted him back to attend her political meetings, but Chia hadn't seen Dazai since he came back, and he thought the idiot was just being a creep and avoiding him, but obviously that was not the case. Chia mirrored Dazai's sitting position and brought a leg out from under the table to tap Dazai's knee with his foot. Dazai's eye fluttered open, and he blinked not looking directly at Chuya. Chuya kicked him this time. No smirk or taunting response, not even a kick back. What the hell was even happening here? The meeting was soon called, and Dazai promptly made his way from the room before Chuya could even get a chance to interrogate him. But that didn't mean Chuya was giving up, damn it. Later into the day, once Chuya was sure of Dazai's whereabouts and that they would not be going on a mission any time soon, he stomped over to Dazai's office across the hallway. The building was mostly empty that day, but even so, Chuya ignored the guard standing at the end of the hallway as he jiggled the doorknob to Dazai's door. It was locked. Cursing under his breath, he ripped the doorknob from the door and let it creak open. As expected, not even a sliver of light could be seen as Chuya pushed past the door. Heavy curtains were drawn over the windows and the lamp on the wooden desk was turned off. Chia let his eyes adjust to the darkness before traveling further into the room, narrowly avoiding the furniture in it. Not that he had memorized the damn layout or anything. Oi, get the hell up, Chia ordered, peeking through the darkness down at the lump on the couch. It shifted a little. Why did Chia feel the need to break into my office in such a barbaric manner? Does I asked from under his blanket, and despite his words, his tone fell flat. He sounded exhausted. Chia reached over to tug on the string of the lamp, and suddenly dim light flooded the room. The lump shifted some more, and Chia bent over slightly to pull the blanket away from Dazai. He looked just as shitty as he did earlier at the meeting, but now his hair was even more ruffled, and he had ditched his overcoat to lay it over the chair. Chia scrunched his nose. You need to brush your hair, and you need to take a shower. So demanding... 
It's simple hygiene, and brushing your teeth won't be a bad idea either. And despite Chia's demands, someone needed to be the one to keep an eye out on the idiot when he was like this. Right now, at the moment, Chia could tell that Dazai wouldn't take kindly to any more orders. He would need to drag Dazai out of this cave and do something, eventually. Maybe he would take him to the arcade, but in stages like this, it would be best to let him rest. I'm not getting up. A beat of silence. I know. Chia turned around to flip the light off and to leave the office, but instead something stopped him. He looked down to give Dazai a questioning look, when he felt the stare on his back. Dazai did not say anything, and neither did Chia. Because the look they shared was enough, words weren't needed. Chia sighed and rolled his eyes. Fine, scoot over, idiot. Dazai for once obeyed as he made room for Chia next to him. Neither cared that the door was still cracked open and the couch and blanket were too small to share between the two of them. Not one word was exchanged as they settled in, breaths fanning across each other's faces as the breathing patterns at last led Dazai into a long-needed sleep. Chuya followed shortly after. An hour later, Koyu Ozaki delicately pushed past the ajar door in her search for Chuya, though her red lips tilted upwards when she saw that she had found him. Seeing no urgent reason to bother the teenagers, she snapped a picture and it was as if she had never been in the room in the first place. Later that week, Chia took Dazai to the arcade after convincing him to take a shower and the crab they made later had been devoured. Every time he seemed to know, Dazai whined. It's as if he can read my mind, though that's impossible because no one can predict my movements. Oda hummed in response as if he had not been zoning out during Dazai's complaints for the past five minutes, and Ango, who had just arrived, adjusted his glasses on his nose. To be clear here, you are talking about Nakahara, correct? Yes, Dazai answered Ango, and watched as both the other men's faces hardened. Almost in sync, they took a long swig from their respective drinks, as they always did when Dazai breached the subject of Chuya. It happened at least once every hangout, and does I wondered why? Well, it's not impossible for him to know you well. Oda decided to speak, raising a finger for the bartender to replace his now empty glass. You have been partners for a while now, right? Does I pouted. Yes, yes, but still, it's unsettling that he can do such a thing. He should not be able to. Perhaps I should wear a tin hat around him, on the off chance he's reading my mind. You should... You should not, Oda interrupted Ango, turning back to Dazai. It isn't a bad thing that at least one person there can read you. Yes, Ango agreed. It makes you more efficient partners. Now that we are completed with this segment of chatting about Chuya, I would very much like to move on to another conversation topic now. Dazai continued to stare down at the wooden countertop, tracing patterns into it as he pondered. Perhaps Ango and Odasaku were not completely wrong. Not gonna lie, school's starting up soon, and that combined with work, combined with like other stuff that I got going on, my already slowed updates will be even slower. So that's fun.